Hello and welcome. Today I'll be showing you guys how to make a throne room for your V Rising castle. This video is the fourth in a five part series. Each part will show a different example and time lapse of how each one was made. I'll be explaining the process throughout each build so that you too can make an awesome throne room for your castle. I've also made several other videos on castle building and I'll be linking those in the description below. All right, now let's get started. This throne room is something that I would like to call the afterthought. Now, not everyone wants to make an elaborate, beautiful throne room, but hey, you got to put it somewhere, right? So if you're anything like myself and you tend to forget where anything goes, uh, you definitely want to take the time to maybe plan out where you're going to eventually place it. Now, with this particular build, I've decided to kind of go with a three story high, basically a build that you could either have in the front of your castle, the back of your castle, sides, uh, wherever pretty much you want, because the size of it in this uh, particular space isn't particularly large compared to the size of the rest of the plot. So yeah, you have some options here. Um, I definitely wanted to kind of create spaces where it looks like you could host guests or even just have a good old time. So if you notice here, I started adding the windows onto the third floor. I have already placed down the throne. And at this point, I started closing up all the stuff to make sure that we had a roof over everything. And I think this is around the time I started decorating. Yep, there we go. And I start placing down a foundation. I decided to go with a library flooring, the new one, the super light colored one, which I really, really like a lot. Um, I think I like it because of the contrast it has with the walls being as dark as they are if I decide to go with a purely wooden wall. And I also decided to go with purple as the color theme for this particular build. At this point, I'm just adding details to the walls, making sure everything is covered, making sure everything pretty much has what it needs. And I started experimenting a little bit with rugs and carpets here just to kind of figure out what I wanted to do. And I knew I wanted to close off the sides as bedrooms for guests. So I decided to place that there. And of course I had to add some music while I was working on this. Can't have a super quiet uh, castle while I'm working on stuff. Would be a little boring, wouldn't it? At this point, I'm kind of choosing what furniture I want to use in the two rooms on the second floor. Um, I started making little nooks and stuff. I decided to make kind of a book nook like I have in previous examples. I think it was the one tile uh, video where I showed that initially. But yeah, I really, really like this idea and I decided to keep the little uh, dresser area visible and as part of the bedroom as an open part. I started experimenting with different paintings, different things I could possibly use here, different rug types and things like that. But I knew that for sure I wanted everything to be purple. Of course, you can't have a nice cozy room without a fireplace, so I had to make sure to add that in as well. At this point, trying to figure out what coloration I wanted was a little bit uh, more challenging, especially because the room is so small. Uh, but I ultimately decided to add a white light above the dresser area just so that while your vampire is doing their makeup or whatever the heck they're doing, they're not uh, distorting the colors and they know exactly what they look like. That's assuming the mirrors even work, that is. I kind of played with the idea of putting some vines behind the chair, but I didn't think it made much sense, so I ultimately decided not to do that. I wanted this room to look kind of like the other room, but mirrored and a little bit different. I don't want the rooms to be exactly the same in this case because there's only two other bedrooms. But I think this setup would be really nice for like a couple of vampires who just want to chat and chill.
At this point, I started trying to figure out where to put the vampire lock boxes. I figured maybe it'd be a good idea to keep a couple of them around just in case. Now on the second floor, I started working on kind of a similar setup, but then I ended up going back downstairs and kind of revisiting the entryway. I decided to add some portraits in the hallway to give it a little bit of life. I also added some plants, or as I like to say, shrubbery to the build. And I also thought maybe adding a couple of benches in the entryway wasn't a bad idea either. On the second floor, I wanted to create kind of a library area or like a reading area, like an exclusive kind of library. That way, if there were any tomes or anything that, you know, a vampire could possibly want to read through, they definitely have quick access to that above. And it would also be a nice area for people to relax in, especially if you have any guests come over. At this point, I started experimenting with uh, some candle stands, trying to figure out the spacing so that the lighting in the room wasn't overwhelming in any specific area. And with a little bit of tinkering, I think I got the room just right. At this point, I started adding more decorations on the second floor, some banners, some curtains, things like that. And this other room on the second floor is actually going to be the servants' quarters. I had a little bit of a dresser here with a, a little bit of carpet. Didn't want to make it too, too fancy, but I also didn't want it to look distasteful. <laughs> Ultimately, I decided to get rid of the dresser and just put down a mirror with a secretaire. And I think that look just kind of made it seem a little bit better. On the third floor, I'm over here just working on some of the lighting and balance. Now, something that's really important when you're putting a throne together isn't just symmetry. I wanted the room to look just symmetrical enough so that things would be very similar, but I also wanted to create a feeling of power in the room. And what better way to do that than adding some prison cages? I also added some tables and chairs so that guests could dine and wine, I guess. Wine and dine, I guess you could say, in this particular case. The hard part was figuring out how I wanted to place the carpet in relation to the tables and chairs. I ended up moving the tables and chairs quite a few times just to get it just right into that empty square of space. I'm pretty happy with the color scheme of this room. I think going with the purple was a good idea. It has a really regal feel to it, and I think it looks really nice. The hard part was trying to get the throne and this carpet to align in a way that I liked, so that was a little bit of a challenge, but eventually I got it just right and was able to move on to the statues and other elements I wanted to add to this build. I decided to go with the same statue facing two different ways, but facing the center to kind of give a little bit more of a 
grand feel to the room, even though the room is relatively small compared to other castle builds I've done. And I added a few pillars in here just to add a little bit of uh, extra visual variety around the staircase because I didn't want it to look too much like just a hole in the ground. I started messing around with bureaus and spacing things out, added some wine cases, added more shrubbery, as I like to say, with uh, the various plants and stuff. I had quite a bit of experimentation around the staircase because I wanted this area to not overwhelm or outperform the look of the throne itself. So. That's why I use the purple lighting around the throne, whereas the rest of the room has its own uh, natural lighting color. I decided to add a center column on the second floor, mostly to split the staircase. started messing around with the chandeliers and I decided to make the chandeliers purple just to kind of follow the theme of hey important people are here <laughs> whenever the color purple is present. At this point, I started going back, adding little tiny details to the hallways, adding a little bit more life to them. I also ended up swapping out one of the plants for a candle stand on the third floor. I thought maybe I had too many plants around the staircase. And at this point, I started working on the outside. Now, the outside was a little bit more difficult for me. I'm never really good at building gardens and things like that. Um, I've had requests to like make guides on like gardens and things, but I, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that, guys. I'd have to spend a lot of time practicing with the, um, with the pieces for the gardens. But I don't know. If you guys really want to see that, just let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll take the time to, to make that. I started working around the doors with some lighting. I wanted to create a little bit of light around the door so you could tell the difference between certain types of doors, like the inner doors and the outer doors, because the inner and outer doors do not lead to the same place. So I wanted to make it somewhat clear that that was the case. I thought it was a little too bright in front of the doors, so I added some bird baths instead. Add a little bit of shrubbery to the sides with some garden planters. And I also kind of experimented a little bit with the colors of the shrubbery. I decided to go with the pointy ones. And I used the three different heights. I decided to change up the flooring on, at the last minute on the outdoor area because I felt that some areas needed to kind of stand out more than others. And then I ended up going back to the third floor and trying to kind of add a little bit more life to the section behind the staircase or above the staircase. So what do you guys think about the afterthought? Does it feel like an afterthought or do you think it still stands prominently amongst the other thrones that we've seen so far in this series? Let me know in the comments below. For those of you who don't know, my name is Sholo Q. I'm a Sholo Eats Quintly, Reaper, and Guide to the Underworld. I stream three times a week on Twitch, Kick, and YouTube, and you can find me playing V Rising usually on Wednesdays. I hope to see you there. If you like this video, please leave a like, share, and subscribe, and as always, Sholo out.